Hi guys, this is Mike. In this Cinema 4D tutorial, I'm going to show you how to customize the interface. What you'll be learning is undocking and docking palettes, saving and loading layouts, customizing existing palettes, creating new palettes, assigning keyboard shortcuts, customizing existing menus, and making new menus. We have a few ways to customize our interface within Cinema 4D. One of the first ways we can look at customization is to look at the drop down menu that we have at the top right hand corner of your screen. You have a few different types of layouts and we can choose a few of the layouts that we have say for example model and we can start experimenting with changing the layout that we have here. Now if you start customizing don't worry that you're overriding anything that we have in our startup because as soon as you make changes and then you go to your next go to another layout it will over it will eliminate anything that you have done. So just keep that in mind as you're experimenting with the customization interface once you have something that you like, make sure you save by going to Window, Customization, and Save Startup Layout, or Save Layout As. These will save your layouts, and then you'll be able to go back to them over and over again, but it won't overwrite anything that you have in your startup. What you'll see is you'll see a, uh, a layout with a parentheses and then user next to it. That's how you know that's your own layout. So let's begin talking about how we can start customization. If you notice that we have a few of these little grids at the top of some of your layouts, that is the grasp icon and you can start maneuvering and moving things around within your, your layout. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the model layout and I'm going to take a look at a few of the different layouts that we have here down at the bottom. And so you'll see something like live selection will have this little grasp icon. I'm going to left click and drag to somewhere in our viewport and you can see that we have this white line, this light gray line that pops up. That's how you know that you have your icon or your menu, where you're going to be dragging it to and where it's going to reside once you release your left mouse uh, button. So in this case, I'm going to bring it to the side over here and I'm going to release the mouse button. And you're going to see that now this menu has now popped up into this menu. And if we right click on our grasp icon, you can see we have a few different options in which to customize how this looks. So now that it's from a horizontal view, and now we're putting it into a vertical view, now we can maybe change how this looks. We can change it to simply icons and text, and you can see how that is highlighted, and we have text below icons. Now if I right click and I take off text, now it's just going to be icons. And I can take that off as well. It doesn't matter just as long as the text is uh, taken off. So we now just have icons highlighted. We can choose different sizes. We can go small oops, excuse me, medium, and we can go to large, and we can go back to its original size. So we also have the ability to make these tab customizations as well. You can see on the side of our object manager, we have a few of these tabs. And something that I like to do is bring up the picture viewer and I'll dock 
or I'll make a tab in my perspective view. So when I'm rendering, I can simply just click on that tab to see that in my picture view. So in order to do that, what you would do is you would click your grasp icon, left click, and then click and hold and drag to your other at grasp icon. In this case, I'm putting it into this viewport and just bring it right on top of it. And what that's going to do is that's going to make a tab. So now you can go back to your view and your picture viewer. So anytime I render to my picture viewer, which is this icon here, it's going to go right to my picture viewer. It's not going to pop up another window. And I'll go back to my regular view. So that's one way you can add in and customize your layout a little bit. So let's look at a few different other ways we can customize. We can customize palettes. If we go to right click on this grasp icon here, we can go to customize palettes. You can also get to this window by going to window, customize, customize palettes. Now, when you're editing any of these palettes, you're going to have to have edit palettes checked and you know you're enabled to change these palettes by seeing this blue eye line that goes around each of the icons. And you can simply just start moving certain things around if you like to change its order. You can also Add in a new palette if you go to right click, new palette. And what this will label, enable you to do is to add in other icons and then add that to your, your interface. So not only can you move things around, but you can add in options. So for example, I'm going to close this window and I'm going to go to shift C. Actually, let me move to, so I'm not over, uh, over this palette. So wherever your cursor is shift C, you'll have a window that pops up for a command. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to, um, if you go to mesh commands, you can see a few options down here. I'm going to use optimize, reset scale, and modeling settings. So shift C, I'm going to type in optimize. And you can see that right here. So I'm going to click and drag. And you'll see this little white line pop up, release. And now you have this icon. And maybe this will be able to see this better if I twirl open the subdivision surface and it go to something like say the head. And you can see that icon now is active. So I'm going to do that again for shift C reset scale. And you can see that right down here. So I'm going to click and drag. See that white line and I'll drop that in. Shift C, modeling settings. And you can see that right down here. And I can click and drag and move that. Whoops, that didn't work. I have to make sure I see that white line. Click and drag. And now you can see that pop right in. So now we have this in a vertical orientation, excuse me, a horizontal orientation. We want to move this into a vertical orientation. So if I right click on our grasp icon and go down to change orientation and that will make it vertical and I can resize this palette now. 
Now I can just dock this anywhere I'd like. I can grab the uh, uh, grasp icon, go to this white line, dock it here. And what I could also do is right click, fold palette. So now I have a icon, this little black arrow at the bottom of this icon. If I click and hold, I now have these options now folded into this one icon. And now what I can do is I can go to right click, customize palettes, have edit palettes enabled, and I can simply drag this underneath our existing palette that we had, right click undock, and now I can simply close this whole, this palette. So now I have these few options in here if I want them. What I can do next is assign keyboard shortcuts to certain commands. So if I go up to here into select, you can see that I don't have any shortcut keys for hide selected, hide unselected, unhide all, and invert visibility. So I'm going to assign keyboard shortcuts to those since I use them occasionally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Window, Customize, Customize Commands. And I want to search for these, for these terms. So what I can do is I can go to Select go over the grasp icon where it says where it's white just click on that and I can pull that out and if I go to modeling uh, go to my head and then go to polygon mode those will be visible so I can see them a little bit better if I go to hide selected And you can see we have a few different types of height selected. But if I match up this icon to this one here, I know that this is height selected. And if I pull this out, this information, and I can see the information a little bit where it's not cut off, I can see that it's hide the current selected components. So next to that, we have a shortcut filter we could search that by shortcut, but right now we're just going to be assigning this, this one component, this one uh, option. So to, to assign the keyboard shortcut, we just go down to this field here where it says shortcut, and I'm gonna use option one. You can use one that's not already assigned. Um, so I'm gonna use option one or alt one and then what I can do is simply click Assign. And now that's assigned to my Hide Selected. Next, I can go to the Hide Unselected. And you can see that here where it says Hide Current Unselected Components. So I'm going to select this and then I'm going to go to shortcut and then go to alt two or option two and then assign. Next I want to go to unhide all. Select this one, go to option three, and then assign. And I'm going to do that again for invert visibility. I 
Let's see, I accidentally put this on invert visibility. So I'm going to delete and choose Alt 4. Oops, excuse me. I'm going to X out of that and then go to shortcut Alt 4, assign. And then we go back to hide selected. Select this, Alt 1, and assign. So now if I mouse over these options, you can see the shortcut key at the bottom, shortcut Alt 1, shortcut Alt 2, shortcut Alt 3, and shortcut Alt 4. So that's one way we can add in keyboard shortcuts to commands that we use often that don't have a shortcut key. Now we also have the ability to customize our textual menus. In order to do that, we can go to Window, Customize, Customize Menus. And now you can see that we have all our menus that we have up here. And if you double click on one of them, you can see that we have our drop down, our sub menus, and we can rearrange these by just moving them around. Maybe moving something like uh, render settings all the way at the top so you don't have to dig through all these menus we can, or all these options. You can just go right to render settings. Now you have also have the ability to make your own menu. We can go to new sub menu and we can name that say my menu. And we can start adding in things that we like to use. We can copy and then go to my menu and paste. And let me drag that right underneath. You can see that pops right in. Or we can just simply click and drag and move one of our options into here. Now we can apply. And you can see that right over here. But maybe I want to move this all the way at the back here. Hit apply. And now we have this over here. And now we have our own kind of personalized menu that we can drop all kinds of things that we use often. And if this isn't how you want, you don't have to worry about making a mess of things. You can always revert back to saved or revert to the original software. I put a link in the description to download project files. You can also go to astronomic3d.com to download project files from this tutorial and all the tutorials that I've made so far. Thanks for watching.